Hello, National Academy of Hypothyroidism. This is Dr. Nancy Evans, ready to answer your questions for the week. So we have a few today. The first one is from Analira Cohen, and she asks, what are the pros and cons, if any, of using NDT, and I'll explain to you what that is, for Hashimoto's-induced hypothyroidism, and what are the best ways to help reduce antibodies? So Hashimoto's is one of the autoimmune causes of hypothyroidism. Your immune system is attacking the thyroid gland and it's degrading it. So it's causing lower function of the thyroid and giving you hypothyroidism. NDT, she's asking about, is natural desiccated thyroid medication. So it's usually referring to porcine or pig thyroid medication. So the, it, it works great for hypothyroidism. I love it. It's been around for over 100 years. It has the ratio of T4 to T3, a 4 to 1 ratio, which is about the same ratio we make as human beings. It works really well in most people. Sometimes, though, with uh, Hashimoto's, because your immune system is attacking your thyroid gland, it would also do that same attack on these animal proteins. So sometimes it's advised to switch to a compounded T4, T3 combo, and it basically just has no animal products in it, no extra proteins against which your immune system could mount an attack. So the way to figure out if, uh, you know, which would be better is to get your antibody levels checked, which I assume you have as your baseline, and then with treatment, you can see if those antibodies are, are going higher. If they are, then the poor sign or the NDT is not a good idea for you. And there are some treatments for what to do to bring down those antibodies, and I'm going to answer that in one of the following questions. But uh, I love the natural, natural, excuse me, natural desiccated thyroid. It works great for a lot of treatments for you. Okay, good luck with you. Okay, we've got one today from Tammy Mitchell, and she's doing the self test on our website, and she's a little confused about this. It says. Uh, she's at the question for TPO, that's that antithyroid peroxidase enzyme, and it's asking if her levels are normal or abnormal. And she has a number, but it happens to be falling in the normal range. So is this normal? Is this abnormal? What should we do? This is really interesting because I've seen this change over the last year. So what are these ranges referring to? These are antibodies that your immune system is referring to the fact that your immune system is attacking your thyroid gland. So this is an indication of Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. Now it used to be that the normal range was about 35 and under. But what it meant was that we usually weren't, we were either seeing high, high amounts of the antibodies, and that's what we see with Hashimoto's or Graves', it's up in the hundreds, sometimes even the thousands, clearly indicating that you have this autoimmune condition. We are either seeing the high numbers or we were seeing zero. But what's happening now, perhaps because we're testing more and more patients, is we're starting to see these low numbers. So the numbers between zero and 35, we're calling that normal, but you might have, your number might be 10 or 15. So what we're seeing is you have this slight tendency for this autoimmune reaction. Now in most cases, people are actually fine, I'm not that concerned about it, but it does mean that we want to keep a watch on it, and we're not really classifying you as Hashimoto's or Graves, but you have this slight tendency, and it might mean that you're going to have a little bit of a rockier picture through treatment. It also might mean you want to really clean up your diet to reduce any extra inflammation, make sure your gut is nice and healthy, and we would treat you accordingly. So for your simple question, Tammy, you're within the normal range, so we're not classifying you as Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. But with a further detailed intake, we might find that you have a little bit of that autoimmune tendency that we'll want to clean up. But it's quite minor. As I said, when someone has it, it's usually up in the hundreds or the thousands. Okay, take care, Tammy. And I have a question from Nicole Therian. She said she was just diagnosed with hypothyroidism and her doctor put her on a low dose of meds and she's experiencing quite awful mood swings. She's wondering if this is normal, what should we do about it? 
So the thyroid, the thyroid hormone, it does go into the nucleus of every single cell in the body. So when it's low, your body tries to conserve energy. And one way that it does that is to kind of slow down mental function. So with hypothyroidism, we often see depression. We've seen that in some really, really great studies. Uh, the STAR-D report, they, were, they tested thousands of patients and they found that actually thyroid medication worked better than any antidepressants as far as controlling and adjusting mood. So it's not uncommon to have mood swings if you are hypothyroid. Now, is it because you've been on this new dose of thyroid? I can't quite tell from your questions. What we'd want to do is follow you. You might be experiencing a little bit of depression still and your thyroid medication is actually not adequately treating enough or if you're feeling anxious especially with an increased pulse so take your pulse if your pulse is elevated then your medication could be a little bit too high there's another possibility that you're having a little bit of almost a um, an inflammatory or an, an allergic response to your medication. Occasionally that happens quite often with Synthroid. Occasionally that happens with the T4, T3, like the arm or thyroid. So it's not uncommon, Nicole. I would definitely speak to your doctor about it. Make sure you don't go for too long of a period if it's just a few days. Get back into treatment. Get back in and have your blood tests done, and we'll see if we need to, might just need to adjust your dosage, okay? But it's not uncommon for the thyroid to affect the brain, the mood, cognition, causing anxiety, depression, and also this kind of brain fog, and even sometimes insomnia or sleeping issues. Okay, thanks, Nicole. We have one from Sherry Guess. So you said you're desperate and you've never had your question answered, so I hope we can help you today. So you, it's a pretty long question, and I would like to, you know, this should be further answered in a more complete uh, intake with you. Looks like you've had a tough time with your thyroid. So it sounds like your levels were great for a while. Now you said you were on NDT, meaning that natural desiccated thyroid that I talked about answering uh, on Alira's question. And you said it was a sustained release T3, 100 micrograms, and a T4, 25 micrograms twice a day. Now, if it was a sustained release, it was not NDT because they can't, if we're taking this natural desiccated thyroid, we can't usually make it sustained release unless perhaps they encapsulate it in a sustained release capsule. So I'm not quite sure. I'd have to really look at your formula to see if indeed you were on a sustained release and a natural desiccated. Natural desiccated, so it's that pig or porcine thyroid, is by nature a little bit sustained release because T4 stays in your blood 7 to 10 days. So it is a slow release, but the T3 itself is more instant and it uh, recirculates every day. So uh, you did say that after your total hysterectomy, that you could not tolerate any T3. You know, our hormones and our thyroid have a quite uh, an intricate interplay. So it's quite, it's not uncommon that your thyroid just really gets thrown off, your medication feels too high, or sometimes we need higher dosages. So I like the idea that you're starting over. So she talks about that she's um, trying to even start low levels at a time. I actually, she says that she's been taking T3 now, just even the 10 micrograms, and she's getting a lot of anxiety. So I wouldn't start with just T3 by itself. I would probably get you back on the natural desiccated, so a T4, T3 combo. The side effect profile of that T4, T3 combo is much diminished. T3 by itself, since it's even if it's sustained release, it still comes in and up out of the body in a day. So it can also rev up that anxiety or increased heart rate. So that would be the first thing I would try for you is go ahead and try a natural uh, desiccated, so something like Armor, or I really like Nature Throid. It's a nice clean source. And you could start with just a quarter grain or even split that up if you're being quite, quite sensitive. And then start with that. Now, you said that you've heard these synthetics are awful. To be honest with you, all the thyroid medications are actually really great. There's T4, there's T3, they're all the same identical molecular structure that we make. They are bioidentical. They just don't work on everybody. 
So if you do better on a non-animal based thyroid, don't worry about it. Some people do great on the T4, T3, especially if they have something like Hashimoto's going on, which I talked about with the other questions. Um, but since you want to be on a natural substance, I would go ahead and try something like a clean source of armor and start with that, even just a quarter grain, and you should feel not much of anything. You were on a pretty darn high dose, so I think you might just be always still on a, too uh, under-treated, and you're still getting your anxiety because you just haven't gotten your levels adequate. And I like, she says she's on a paleo diet, taking selenium, sleeping well, meditating, exercising, all that's great. I think that's fabulous. Probably the most important thing are to get your hormone levels adjusted too. If your estrogen is low and your progesterone is low, both of those can cause anxiety and depression. So make sure those are optimal and then your thyroid will probably be working better too. All right, take care, Sherry. Thanks, everybody.